Hey folks, Randy with Pete's RV TV here again today, your local internet dealer. Um, as you've probably noticed, the kids are back in school and the leaves are starting to change color, so it's time for us to start thinking about winterizing our campers. So today's segment, I'm going to take you through uh, this brand new Bullet Premiere and I'm going to teach you how to do a basic winterization. I'll go through uh, the tools necessary and all the steps to uh, um, show you guys how to winterize your RV. Alright, so uh, back in my days in the service department, these are the things that I would kind of take with me to go and do a winterization. So I was prepared to do any camper that was out there. Um, so as you can see, I've got my screw gun with a number two screw tip in it to access the back of the hot water heater once we get to that stage. I've got a couple pair of channel locks here um, on uh, the at hood with hot water heater. It's got a plastic plug. That's how I would pull those out. Uh, suburban hot water heaters have an anode rod in it, inch and sixteenth socket. Depending on which water pump we had, either a jet pump or a SureFlow pump. SureFlow pump is going to be a half inch male pipe thread fitting. Jet pump is going to be a quick connect fitting. So you're going to want to check out uh, what kind of pump and uh, what kind of water heater you got to provide yourself with the proper tools uh, before you go ahead and winterize. Um, I've also got a roll of paper towels here to clean up my mess when I'm done. A couple gallons of antifreeze and now I've done thousands of these so I can usually get by with two gallons. Uh, you may want to get yourself three or four if it's your first time out there just to make sure that you've got enough. It's uh, uh, not fun to run out in the middle of the job when you're not quite done so just make sure you've got enough product to do the job. Okay, so here we are um, at our hot water heater and the first thing you want to do when you winterize your camper after you know you've got all the proper tools is uh, we want to empty all the tanks. Um, so we want to empty the fresh water tank, the black water tank, the galley and the gray tanks and most most importantly uh, our, our hot water heater tank. Um, so this guy here happens to be the Atwood with the plastic plug so we're going to use our channel locks on this one. One very important thing before you empty your hot water tank is if you've got an electric hot water heater element we want to make sure that that device is shut off. Once we drain the water out of this tank if this camper gets plugged in um, that element will come on and with no water in that tank you will burn out the element and it will need to be replaced. So before emptying this tank make sure uh, the electric elements are off um, from the switch inside or the service switch on the water heater or even the breaker inside your RV. That way we won't run into troubles down the road. So anyway, back to our water heater. I'm going to drain this guy off right now. So we've got the plastic plug down here below as I mentioned. So I'm just going to loosen this guy up. Now to relieve the pressure on the hot water heater so we don't get a, a blast of water coming out here, I'm just going to crack this relief valve which will also help it drain out a little better. It will let some air go into the top of the tank as we're uh, emptying the tank out. There's the plug. There's our water coming out. Relief valve's open, so a good flow of water. When you put this back in, you're going to want to put some Teflon tape on or some Rector Seal to seal that up uh, so you won't have any leaks in the spring. So after we've dumped our uh, hot water heater from the outside of the unit, uh, what we want to do is use that approximate location to find the back of the hot water heater inside the unit. Um, this particular one here is located in this cabinet for us. Um, so what what the water heater bypasses and what you're going to see on the back of the hot water heater when you access it is a series of valves or maybe one valve. Um, what we, we don't want to put six gallons of antifreeze in them, that hot water heater tank so what we want to do is connect the hot and cold plumbing lines together so we can go ahead and winterize the hot and cold side of our camper without filling up that tank. So this guy here is the three valve system which we're going to see in uh, older campers that are out there. Um, what I'm going to do is just turn these valves in the opposite position as they are right now. Right now they're in the use position so we want to turn them into the winterization mode. So cold line off, outgoing hot off, and our connector pipe between the two. We want to put that on so the antifreeze can travel into the hot side of our plumbing system. So what we've got here in this particular unit is uh, the single valve system which we're going to see in some of the newer product out there and uh, they're using a, a check valve on the top of the tank uh, rather than the three valve system so all we need to do right now that valve's horizontal that's the use position but we need to go flip it to vertical that way we're allowing the antifreeze to flow up uh, the connecting pipe and into our hot water plumbing system. All right, so um, I know where the particular water pump is in this unit. If you're not sure where your water pump is in your unit, you can go ahead and uh, turn the water pump on and listen for it audibly. Um, you will hear the pump run not going to hurt to run that pump dry for uh, a few minutes while you locate the pump. Um, once you've located the pump, then we need to go ahead and access it. Let's finish removing my screws here. And down below here I've got my uh, water pump. In this particular coach we've got the jet pump so I'm going to be using uh, 
this fitting here that works in conjunction with the jet pump. Now, um, to, to figure out which side is the incoming um, end of the water pump where we want to hook our hose to to draw the antifreeze from, um, how I typically do it is there's going to be a flex line coming off that pump going usually to the underbelly or to our water tank where our fresh water is held. Um, on the other side of the pump you may see a T or some hard plumbing to it. So usually that single flex line is going to be your incoming side of the pump. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is undo that. You might get a little water run out there from the head of the pump. That's what the paper towels are going to be for to clean up a little bit. So I'm going to install my winterization hose, which I've done here. And again, if you've got a Sureflow pump, um, which is gonna be a, a metal case with a, with a black head on it, we would use a half inch mill pipe thread where the jet pump is a quick connect fitting. Here we are with our antifreeze. I've got my hose hooked up. Um, this particular one, I think is gonna work best for me to set this down here to draw from. I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hose into the antifreeze jug. Then we're gonna go uh, turn the water pump on and start running our faucets. Now before we turn the water pump on, we wanna make sure all the faucets are closed. Um, we've also already done our hot water heater bypass, so with all faucets closed, we'll turn the pump on and start winterizing. Here I am at the kitchen sink. I've turned my water pump on. We're starting to draw out of that uh, um, antifreeze jug that we just hooked up. So what I'm gonna do now is turn the cold water on. And I'm going to run it till I see pink. Pushing some air out of the system. There's a good pink flow. I'm going to do the same on the hot water side. Now sometimes I've heard before that it's best to run uh, you know, the farthest sink away first and then work yourself towards the pump. I've done thousands of these and I've never had an issue and I don't there's no real rhyme or reason I just make sure that I get a good pink flow um, on every faucet before I put it away the PEX plumbing will take freezing even if there is a little water in it it's our fixtures and our uh, our connections of the plastic fittings that do not take the freezing they will crack so um, I usually just start with the closest faucet to me and run both until I see pink same with the bathroom sink nice pink flow there and again on the hot water side and we've got good pink there. So next I'm going to do the toilet. This guy here is a foot flush, so I'm just going to uh, press the foot flush till I see a good flow of pink to get it up in that valve there. Here we are in our shower, and I've uh, removed the, the shower head and brought it down here so I can kind of control the flow. Um, again, cold, hot. Now I'm going to run it up through the shower head. And I've got good pink everywhere there, so we're good to go. Some people will actually undo the shower head um, from the faucet to alleviate any water or antifreeze that may sit in there through the winter months. So a lot of coaches are coming equipped nowadays with some sort of outside shower or hot and cold running water outside, so we want to make sure that we get that. Um, I can honestly say that I've forgotten it in the past, so uh, just make sure you put this on your list of things to do. So again, Turn the water on until you see pink. Good way to see it out here is running against the body of a white coach. Make sure that you've got the water out. And we've got good pink there. Um, before I came outside, I switched over my antifreeze jug because I noticed that uh, I was running a little bit low and you'll have to do that throughout the process depending on uh, how much you use, obviously. So anyway, system is uh, winterized with the water pump. We've got one more step and we'll be done complete our last step uh, and this is a very important thing to do um, after we've done all the water receptacles i.e. the sinks the toilets the outside showers uh, everything like that um, really important we need to come back in the coach and turn off our water pump the water pump pressurizes the system at about 40 psi so we want to turn that pump off so we no longer need to pump antifreeze through the system and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come in and i'm going to open the cold water faucet so I'm leaving any pressure on the system whatsoever and we need to do this to winterize the city water fill. So now you can see this has stopped running. I've alleviated all the pressure on the, on the water system. Now we can go outside and do the city water fill and we're going to be done. So after we've turned off the water pump inside and uh, we've relieved the pressure on the system, we want to come outside to our city water fill. And this is where we'd hook our garden hose if we were at the campground. Um, and this often gets overlooked and I've seen a lot of them change because of it. Um, so first thing we want to do is 
pop this screen out here and there's a check valve in here so when we're using our water pump water doesn't spray out this city water fill now if I were to press this in while it was still under pressure, it would allow me to press it in, but it ruins an O-ring in there. So that's why it's really important to alleviate that pressure on the system that the water pump has provided for us before we push this check valve in. So now with the water uh, off, pump off, system left the pressure, I can go ahead and pump this in and you'll see water run out. I'm just going to hold that in there. And now I've got antifreeze. Our system has been winterized. All right, so after we're done with our city water fill, um, what I like to do is I stick the paper towels that I mentioned earlier in the video. I like to tear off a couple of them, kind of lease them in the base of my sinks in my shower. Um, that cleans up a little bit of antifreeze that uh, um, may have been left in the sink of the shower. Um, I also, uh, it'll catch any residuals that come out of here. If you have any antifreeze left in the jug um, from your winterization process, you can go ahead and pour the extra down the traps, a little bit extra line of defense there. Um, Again, all these things can be purchased uh, at our Pete's RV online store that can be uh, accessed from Pete'sRV.com. Um, there's pump converters and things out there that might make uh, your winterization process easier. Um, the other thing with this video that we just made is uh, I kept it very simple, uh, down to basics on this. Um, there is some devices out there that do need attention that I did not mention in this video. Uh, sewer flushes, washer and dryers, ice makers, things like that. That's stuff you really want to bring to your local dealer and have done. That way you won't have issue with it in the spring. But uh, um, this, this should uh, get you going on where you need to be and maybe give you a little pointers and I hope you learned something. Um, so thanks again for watching Pete's RV TV with uh, Randy here today. Um, again, you can come see us uh, at Pete's RV online, www.pete'srv.com. Visit our online store or our Facebook page. We've always got some great things going on there as well. So thanks again for thinking Pete's RV and happy camping.